Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Fiona and I make Christian and relationship videos for the God-fearing millennial to encourage you guys alongside your walk with Christ. So I'm so bubbly and excited for today's topic. We're going to be talking about ladies standards, okay? And gents, you're very much welcome to sit in and jot some notes and gain some wisdom as well. So we're going to be talking about standards and what they are and why it's so important to have standards when entering into a new relationship. Of course, it's all going to be based off of biblical principles. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so what is a standard exactly? I may or may not have Googled this just so I can get the exact definition, but a standard, in short, is a level of quality or attainment that one desires to reach in order to feel satisfied. So, in regards to a relationship, when you're meeting a partner, there are certain things, qualities, or attainments they have to reach in order to be suitable to 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 be in a relationship with you. My career of choice is actually probably a great way to describe to you guys what I mean by standards. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I am actually a registered nurse by profession. So as of March of this year, 2020, I became registered so I could start working with a license. One of the things that I remember that was engraved so hard in all of my experience going through school and doing um, my clinicals and all of those other things in nursing is that there's uh, a best practice, something we call best practice. And so based on best practice, we develop a standard of care that we give to our patients. So if there's something that doesn't meet the requirements of, of, of being best practice in our care for a patient, um, then it wouldn't be safe for our patient to receive that care or to receive that treatment because it could be a risk to their health, it could be a risk to their safety, could be a risk to um, even just their psychological needs. Best practice is kind of a way of m ensuring that our patients get the best care. So that's a standard that we hold ourselves to as nurses. It is to make sure that we are providing adequate, safe, and competent care to our patients. If you don't meet that standard, then you cannot work as a nurse because the patient is the one who's at jeopardy. And I think we should think of our relationships the same way. If someone doesn't meet our standards, then it's quite possible that they can inflict harm on us or they can um, prevent us from moving forward in our lives and you know they, all kinds of things because you're unequally yoked. So as a single Christian woman that hopes to be married down the road, I don't believe in such a thing as having too high of a standard. What I do believe in is possibly having right standards and wrong standards based on biblical truths because Biblical truths are everything. They're principles. They're the right principles to have in life. Some people may confuse standards to preferences, though. So um, what I would consider, this is just speaking for myself, not that everyone believes in the same way I believe. But for me, having like a good standard would be like having or desiring a man with integrity, desiring a man who is filled with the Holy Spirit, not just born again and not just a Christian, but someone who's filled with the Holy Spirit. Also, a standard of desiring a man who is mature in their walk with Christ is also a legitimate standard to have because perhaps you may be along, further along your walk with Christ compared to someone else and they just don't meet that maturity that you'd hope to have in a relationship. You, ladies, it's also good to have a discerning spirit so that if God sends you someone, you can decipher whether this is the person God sent you to find you and to pursue you rather than just the person that you know you dreamed about and, and desire and therefore automatically this person becomes your future partner. Remember, the enemy is listening too to your desires and what your heart is longing for. So he might send you someone who looks a little bit like he could be in that package that you're hoping for, right? He might have exactly the preferences that you were hoping and asking God for countless nights. And here he comes and he's a whole counterfeit, okay? Full, complete counterfeit. So not God sent in short. Um, so it's important to have a discerning spirit and I think the best way to develop 
the right desires is when you seek God, he's going to just give you like the more you intertwine yourself with Christ and and his characteristics and his nature, the more you're going to desire his things the more you're gonna desire him you start becoming the person you want to marry and you start producing the fruits of the Sp holy spirit and when you have those desires that are al aligned with god's desires for you and your heart and you know how much he loves you and how much he's chosen you and so you want the best for yourself and you're gonna stick to your standard you will recognize that god doesn't want you to settle for anything less that ain't it no god wants you to wait for someone who is so much better and i feel like i really do believe in the scripture that says no ear has heard no eye has seen the great things that god has in store for the, those who love him and also like the blessings of the lord bring no sorrow if you are in a relationship with someone and you feel like there's no peace in that relationship and you feel like it's just not working out and you're working harder to maintain a relationship with someone who doesn't even want to be in a relationship with you or someone who's not investing at the same rate and not pursuing you then that's in itself a standard you there's a certain level of investment someone should be putting into your life if they're not putting that level of investment they may not they may simply just not be that into you you imagined that they loved you maybe at first they showed you some signs and then you took it all the way to marriage and then now you're like disappointed you have to have a standard that's based on what you see what their actions are and how much they really do show you they love and care about you and if a man can pursue you the way christ pursues the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Good start, good start for that kind of relationship. Ladies, standards are even more important for us because in the Bible, it calls us as women to submit to our partners, to submit to our husbands, I should say. If you're going to submit to someone, you need to respect their leadership. You need to respect their character and just like trust them, trust that they're gonna lead you in the ways of God, trust that they're gonna lead you in a serving manner, um, trust that they have your best interest at heart. Like in a marriage, or I say marriage, I, I feel like I shouldn't be giving marriage advice because I'm not married, but I f I've been in a relationship before and I can say that in a relationship, you want to be able to respect your partner to the point where we, you can submit to them. If you can't submit to your partner, there's just going to be a lot of clashing. There's going to be a lot of unmet expectations. There's going to be a lot of differences. And God hasn't called you guys in, a, in that relationship to be fighting against each other and like trying to compete or whatever. He's called you to give glory to him. He wants you guys to have the holy spirit like be filled with the holy spirit so that you can give glory to him because remember marriage is an institution that god created it's actually supposed to represent the marriage that he has with the church so that intimacy you get in marriage like you're supposed to glorify god with it so for women you're called to submit to your husbands and men you're called to love your wife like love and first of all i need to make a whole video just for the men about love i think just you know from what i've studied and and the, th the revelations that god has given me through other speakers and other pastors um but love is not just love is is actually a tough thing to give if you are aiming to give it in the right way it is something that takes a lot of effort so if you lead in that way and in in serving and loving your wife then your wife will follow and respect you and submit to your leadership because she can trust you she can entrust you with with the the way the family is moving forward the way the family is growing and and even just trust your counsel but also it's trust because your counsel you're getting as the husband you're getting counsel from god himself and so ladies if you find yourself being pursued by a man make sure that he falls into that alignment as well make sure that he is compliments your assignment because god has called you for something so important and so valuable he is, cherishes you make sure that he is aligned with your calling as well and so to finish off ladies 
you need to become the person that you want to marry. You can't expect something from someone that you're not working on in yourself as well. If you want someone with upright character, you should also have upright character. If you want someone who's filled with the Holy Spirit, you should also be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you guys can complement one another and fulfill, or I should say really, help to fulfill each other's callings in your lives so that your marriage glorifies the goodness of God. And so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was informative or helpful or whatever. Um, <laughs> and I'm just going to pray out. So thank you, Father, for this wonderful group of people. I pray, Lord, that you may just cover them and protect them and also lead them um, again in your righteousness. Father, continue to lead them. May, they, may their hearts just be prepared for your calling in their lives, oh, Father. And as they desire marriage, as they desire to move forward and be in a relationship, may you enter their hearts so that you can just help them develop the right standards in their in their hearts so oh, father help them to have standards where they can be focused on the character of the individual and also focus on your purposes for their lives so that they can pick someone who complements your will for their for their lives oh father it's in the mighty name of jesus that i believe and pray amen i'm always in the dark by now i'm always in the dark by then i don't know what it is but it is the lighting outside, it's the sun, it disappears. It doesn't like me sometimes. And now it's back. Yay. Okay, there we go. So, I will see you guys. Hope you guys have a blessed week. And love you. Bye.